enough with the yellow v8 and the yellow v9 hype today i'll teach you something different i'll teach you how to use the pytorch framework together with a faster rcnn model to perform object detection ready to do it let's get right into it so first of all we'll be using pycharm and uh over here in pycharm first thing we'll do is to install the libraries we'll be needing and i have all of them right in the requirement.txt file so i'll just open up my terminal and um, let me clear this for a sec when you do pip install hyphen r requirement.txt you hit enter on this and this is going to install all the libraries i've already installed them so you can see requirements already satisfied but in your case uh, you have to make sure you are on internet because it will go ahead and install all these libraries for you okay so that's all for the installation aspect of it i can now close the terminal and then uh, i'll close the requirement.txt file before you continue let's explore the files we'll be using for this particular tutorial and over here i have an image of a cat which we'll be using to test the faster rcnn model i also have an um, image of myself right here we'll also use it to test it as well finally one image of a dog is also present here which we'll also use it then uh, over here we have classes.txt and this contain all the objects the faster rcnn model can detect so i'll make sure all these files are on the github repository where you can leverage it together with the code in order to try it out yourself okay so in the main.py file now um, i think we are all set and done the first thing i'll do is to import touch i also uh, import cv zone i'll import opcv which is cv2 i import transform from touch vision so from touch vision we are going to import transforms and finally for our model in order to get a faster rcnn model we we'll import touch vision and that's it so these are the libraries you need to import in order to follow this tutorial completely the next thing is to load in our model so i'll define it here model is equal to vision dot models detection then uh over here you select any detection model you want to use with touch vision so you can see they have couple of models here a lot of them um ssd light max rcnn fast rcnn so today we'll be using this first one faster rcnn resnet 50 fpm so we just hit click on it and inside this parenthesis, since you are going to use a pre-trained model, you need to specify. So we do that by writing pre-trained equals true. And that's all. So this will go ahead and download the pre-trained model for you the first time you run this uh, line of code. Then we can also print uh, model.eval so that we can see the architecture of the model. So let me run this up. Okay, so you can see right here on the terminal, we've uh, downloaded the pre-trained model successfully. You didn't see the downloading process because i went ahead and downloaded this model already but for the first time any of you run this it will go ahead and uh, download the pre-trained model for you so you make sure you have internet connection as well so this is the architecture you can see it uh, the convolutional blocks uh, batch normalization block and so on so um, that's it and we've just evaluated it to uh, see if we are really uh, loading a pre-trained model but i think Printing it is not necessary. It should just be here like this model.eval. The next thing I'll go ahead and do is to load in my classes. So before we started, I showed you the classes.txt file right here, which contain the name. So I'll go ahead and load these classes with open. Inside here, specify the name. So the name is classes.txt. And over here, we want to watch, read it. So we specify R so it will be good to read it in the list so we just do it class names is equal to an empty list and over here we'll do class names is equal to f dot read dot split line so we'll split all the names on different lines and that's all so that's it to check whether this is uh correctly read we can just print our list for class names and let's try this out okay so over here you can see all our classes have been read as a python list and uh, we are good to go so this is all of them and that's it i can just comment this out the print statement so the next thing to do here is to load in the image so we'll load in an example image and for that i'll just say image is equal to cv2.imread 
specify the name of the image and i'll start with the dog so dog.jpg the next thing is to resize this image and i'll resize it to the size of 640 by 480 you can give it any size you want so this is what we need to do we read in the image and we've resized this particular image so one thing about pytorch is that uh it works with tensors and by default when you read an image using opcv uh it's a numpy array so you have to convert this particular image to pytorch tensor in order to work with it so we can uh even print the type of the image for us to be sure whether the image is a numpy array and hola here is it you can see class numpy array so this will not work with pytorch you have to convert it to pytorch tensors and that's what i'm going to do so down here after reading this image uh, we can say image transform is equal to transform dot to tensor and then we can um, now take this image which is equal to image transform and we pass this image into the image transform but it will be a good thing to uh, change the name here so that there will not be any conflict among the names so i'll use img and now if we should print both types you can see we we'll have numpy array and a pytorch tensor okay so the first one is for the numpy image we are reading in with opcv and the second one is for pytorch so let's run this and check and here we go guys so you can see this is class numpy and it's the one we've read with opcv the next one here is class uh, pytorch tensor so it's a torch tensor and now this will be able to work compatibly with uh, pytorch okay so the next thing we have to do here is to feed this image uh, into our model so that we can get some predictions okay so that's what we'll do and to do that we'll say with torch dot no grad and what no grad simply means here is that we don't want to track the computational graph because we want to use this model we are not training a model so we don't want to track the computational graph so that's why we are using touch dot no grad so our prediction here now will be equal to our model then inside our model we'll pass this image as a list because it's a single image so we'll just pass our image as a list and be careful to pass only the pipe tensor image the image you've converted to tensor when you pass the numpy image you are going to get error before pytorch and uh we can go ahead and print our predictions oh yeah so you can print the prediction and we can also print these predictions dot keys it retains you a dictionary and this dictionary have a uh, keys so you actually take this at in the zero the first in the so i'll run this up and let's see all right so we got some results so this is the prediction you can see so uh this retains a dictionary we have boxes which uh it's for the bounding box coordinates so with boxes we have the tensor so this is the actual coordinates of the bounding box so you have the four points x1 x2 y1 and y2 so we have it for predictions and also we have the labels so the labels correspond to the uh, particular label or particular name it it has detected then the last thing here will be the score so uh, how confident it is that is detecting the particular object is detecting so that's the three things we have and you can see the dictionary we are printing we have the bounding box information we are having the labels and we are having the scores as well okay so now we can just go ahead and extract this bounding box together with the scores and the labels and uh, visualize it on the image so i'll just comment these ones out and the next thing we'll do is to assess those things so uh, to get a bounding box we we'll also get the scores and uh, lastly we we'll also get the labels and this is equal to our prediction at in the zero in the key of boxes for the bounding box we'll do the same thing for the rest of them so i'll just copy this and change the names so we are assessing the keys so boxes for the bounding box scores for the 
confidence and their class labels as well. So prediction at index zero in the key of boxes, the same in the key of scores and the key of labels to get the various parameters which are necessary for us. Okay, so we want to detect these objects when, uh, let's say, the scores is greater than some particular threshold. So let's say when it detects this uh, cat and uh, it has detected the cat with a confidence of let's say 70%, we want to uh, take it because we really think that is a cat. So that's what we're going to do. So we can just do uh, conf or confidence, yeah, conf is equal to, then we we'll use uh, this particular PyTorch function. So it's called torch.argware. Anywhere our scores or score is greater than some particular threshold so let's start with 70 so anywhere we've detected that the uh, detection confidence is greater than 70 we are going to uh, take all those particular detections and display them on the image so this will actually return to us a list of detected objects so we are just going to iterate through it and get our coordinates our class names and class labels and display it on the image so for that we will use for i in range of whatever the confidence will be and what we are going to do is to get our y x y and uh, w and h which is width and height and this is equal to our bounding box then since we'll be using opcv and this is uh back in PyTorch tensor we'll do dot numpy so that will bring it back to uh numpy array and we'll do it dot as type int okay so we are converting every uh return value for this coordinate as integer because by default it will return them as a floating point values so we want to return them as integers instead so that we can use it to draw the bounding box opcv does not accept uh, floating point values when drawing a bounding box or when drawing a rectangle so now we've got in our bounding box information we can just use it to draw the bounding box using cv2.rectangle and we want to put this on our image so the next thing is the coordinates you want to put so x y the next coordinates will be the width and the height for the color i think uh let's just do it that's red and we'll set the thickness to let's say four that's fine so for now we are drawing the bounding box and um i can quickly show this by doing cv2 dot i'm show we'll call this frame and then we want to show our image cv2 dot weight key so now we can even test this out and see whether or not our bounding box will be drawn on the image Okay, so we run into some errors. CV2 has no attribute weight key. So let me check that out. I think um, it's a spelling problem. This should be lowercase. And um, let's run this again. And here we are, guys. So um, there is nothing drawn on the image. There is no rectangle drawn on the image. So let's figure that out. Okay, so it turns out that the problem is here. The return value of this score is a floating point number, it's not, uh, so we should have put in 0 0.70 instead of just 70. Uh, let me give it a run again and let's see how it will perform. And boom guys, you can see how it has localized the dog in the image so well. This is great. This is great. This is great guys. Unlike Yulu, I think Yulu with localization, they are not that good. They try to localize but at least uh, sometimes the bounding box becomes so big from the object but you can see uh, faster CNN in action so now let's go ahead and uh, give it the confidence score in a particular label on top of the bounding box and then uh, we can test it with the other images as well I'll close this up close this up and uh, the next thing is to we'll go ahead and do for uh, the class names so we'll do class name is also equal to our labels that we've taken from here so that's labels of i we also convert it to numpy as well and then uh, we'll do the same as type okay so that's for the class names so the thing is this class name here will return to us an integer value so for instance if the object detected is a person it will return to us one 
if it's a bicycle it will return to us two and so on so you have to uh, be able to correspond that to its label or its name so uh, i'll call that class underscore detected and this is going to be equal to uh, our class names which is here in the key of class name oh, don't do this I have to equal signs that's not well and now we can go ahead and use a uh, cv zone to display this so cv zone dot put text rect or put text rectangle and over here we'll give it our image so i'll just give it the image we'll give it uh, the test which is uh, okay that's fine and the position so the position it takes it as either tuple or a list so i'll give it x plus eight i want it to be right on top of the bounding box and uh, y minus 12 i've done these calculations before so it's not by magic i know this car i've just done it or i've used this particular library so many times so i know exactly where i want it to be that's why i came up with these numbers but you can change it to place it anywhere at all i think uh, the scale we can set it to two and i think this is fine now if it doesn't look good you can uh, change some some couple of things to two as well and that would be great so now with everything out of, out of the way we have to run this again with everything out of the way let's try this once again and see how it will perform and here it is so this is a dog and um we are detecting a dog i just one thing i love about faster rcnn is about its localization how it's able to localize a particular detected object sometimes when i use this type of model then i think yolo v8 yolo v9 and the yolo models are somehow overhyped because these models are doing pretty much complex job and uh with the accuracy is kind of insane but it is what it is it depends what you want to tackle and the type of model you use because this type of model i um, i think they are kind of heavy or heavier than yolo yolo is very fast than them so let's change the image and try out the cat so let's try the cat.png here you go so you can see how the localization is just good guys no cap the localization is just good you can see how it has localized the cat so well in the image finally let's try it on a human being that's which is myself um i'll load in my image and run it and here we go it's indeed a person um it's cutting it off of my hair <laughs> but it's doing a pretty good job i think so you guys should just uh do the comparison yourself let me know in the comment section what you think about these models as compared to the yulu models which are everywhere leave your opinions and um if you like to see more tutorials on these models let me know so that i'll make more videos about them i think they are they are so great the only problem i have with them is that maybe they are not lightweight enough but just imagine converting this model to let's say opv low format um it will make them a little bit faster and you can use them in your application so guys uh this is it if you have not subscribed to make sure you subscribe and also uh, hit the notification bell icon on so that you get notified immediately i release a new video thanks for watching and as usual i will see you in the next tutorial